For thousands of generations, humans have understood time through the lens of our own experience. But now, through the creation of artificial intelligence, we've inadvertently discovered something extraordinary about the nature of consciousness and temporal perception. In our quest to understand the nature of the mind itself, we find ourselves at a remarkable threshold. Welcome to Deep Thoughts, where we examine the fundamental patterns of how humans think, learn, and perceive. Our computational tools have begun to mirror aspects of our own cognition, yet creating true artificial general intelligence requires understanding the deeper principles that guide human thought. I'm Evan Goldstein, a licensed engineer and data scientist, and I invite you to join me on this journey into the very essence of what makes us think. Time is a fascinating concept that we can't really see, hear, or touch. The 18th century German philosopher Immanuel Kant, who revolutionized our understanding of human perception and knowledge, described time as something transcendental. That is to say, it exists beyond our physical senses. We can't directly see, hear, touch, or measure it through our basic sensory experiences. And because of its mysterious nature, time can be tricky to define or categorize. And this creates a puzzle for artificial intelligence when it comes to grasping this essential idea. When we compare machine intelligence to human intelligence, the situation becomes even more complicated. That's because machines process information vastly faster than humans can. Think about how many more calculations a machine could make than a human being could during a split second. If an artificially intelligent system were to be conscious of the passage of time, a conversation could become agonizing. If you and the machine intelligence were to measure time by how quickly you and it process your thoughts, then it could make what might seem to you like a quick-witted and snappy reply in the course of a conversation, but to the computer, it would seem to have taken as long as the time elapsed from the end of the last ice age until now. And if you feel like you're getting value from this episode, I would appreciate it if you would push the like button. It lets me know that I'm making content that you want to see and it helps spread that content to others. So thank you for supporting AI Capitalist. If we want to look at a biblical philosopher, Maimonides, he believed that the biblical description of the creation of the world was precisely six days long, but it contained within it all the ages of the universe. The Bible to him was a book, but it was to be taken both literally and figuratively, and time itself had to stretch to accommodate. This stretchiness is also embodied in Einstein's relativity. It's a phenomenon known as time dilation, where an object moving at close to the speed of light perceives the passage of time to be much slower than that of a stationary observer. Machine minds may be another area where the flexibility of time defies our common sense. Or our common sense understanding of how the world ought to be, not how it is. So let's try a little experiment with an AI chatbot to see how it perceives time right now. Claude can record the passage of time. We're starting the clock running. Let's say... Good morning, Wad. Mm -hmm. What time is it now? I actually have, so Claude already admits, um, how long has passed since our conversation started? Minutes, right? We're at 47 seconds, and Claude is guessing two minutes. Now I'm going to say good afternoon. The sunset is beautiful. How long has... We've been chatting. Four minutes. We're at one minute, 18 seconds. When I was doing this last night, um, it was trying to calculate based on the time, uh, based on the conversation. So it's uh, good morning and then good afternoon. And it had assumed that the time had passed, that hours had passed. We can see there's no internal chronometer within Claude to tell us these things. The model faced a bit of a hiccup with these questions, even though figuring out how to tell time seems like an easy task for a computer. This little challenge comes from the chat history not showing when the conversation kicked off. Large language models essentially have these short memory spans and reset with each prompt, starting fresh with every question, kind of like they forget all of the sunrises and class schedules and the dinner times they've never experienced. However, there is a viable solution to this problem. Imagine if a large language model could be equipped with a dedicated routine that 
directs prompts about time to an internal clock. It could then perform a simple calculation based on the timestamps of the relevant text. While this might seem like a minor adjustment, the reason it is yet to be implemented in ChatGPT and other chatbots is critical. The AI must be able to discern when you are inquiring about real time as opposed to abstract discussions about time. Now, this ability to differentiate is essential for the large language model to effectively utilize external data, unlocking a more accurate context-aware interaction. To make this routine work smoothly, we'll need to do some extra data engineering and create a few handy conversational markers. Humans, on the other hand, navigate time quite differently. Instead of relying on set markers, your mind pieces together the flow of time through your memories. Because you live in a continuous flow of experiences, you can easily recall moments from your life. For instance, you grab breakfast when you feel hungry, and not just because someone reminded you to. When it's time to figure out how long something has taken, you draw on all the memories stored in your mind. You become skilled at connecting these memories with specific markers, like the sound of a class bell, a glance at your watch, or even recognizing that sleepy feeling that comes with your slick pattern. So, without a precise internal clock, taking away the minutes and hours, you rely on the clues from your surroundings and everything you've learned to keep track of time. Our experience of time is a fascinating and fluid journey. Unlike a computer with a strict timeline, our brains don't come equipped with a set of programs that keeps a perfect chronological order from the moment we first opened our eyes in the morning. Instead, we leave our own narrative, piecing together memories as we go. And that's why you might find yourself dreaming about being back in primary school or chatting with a loved one who's passed away. These moments feel real, even if the timeline gets really jumbled and it's not just in dreams. Sometimes our mind plays tricks. We're honest, inviting old memories to resurface in unexpected ways and creating a delightful mix-up in our personal history. Experiencing time in a linear way is something that requires a bit of effort on your own part. It's a journey that you actively create, and it's all based on your motivation. Whether it's social pressures, financial rewards, or personal goals that drive you, the more you care about keeping track, the more energy you'll likely invest. As you gather more information, cross-reference events, refine your earlier thoughts, your insights will become more precise. On the flip side, a purely digital large language model relies on a rigid internal clock and timestamps for each piece of text. While that might seem like a neat trick compared to our sometimes messy way of understanding time, sticking to a strict linear sequence can be pretty limiting. There's not much, there's not much joy in viewing time as something flexible and open to interpretation. You can even explore fascinating concepts like time dilation or time reversal, and this allows you to develop a a rich, nuanced understanding of time that goes beyond what a strict schedule can offer. You're not just following time like any computer would. You're crafting your own personal experience of time because you can chat about time using familiar words. You learn to link to the deeper sense of time with your own thoughts and feelings. You have the ability to perceive time with a unique perspective, much like you do with existence or cause and effect. You can picture time as a flowing river assess its value, and perhaps wish more of it. For instance, dreaming of a longer life. You're aware of the challenges in accurately measuring time, and you might even create clever tools like hourglasses or atomic clocks to help with that. You might notice the curious quirks about time, such as how it seemed to zoom by when you're having fun, or the fact that it can never be rewound. You can even bring a playful touch by personifying time, thinking of it as father time we're saying that it's on your side it's important to mention that i might be leaning a bit towards a western perspective many other cultures embrace a more polychronic approach to time now, that means that they have a flexible non-linear view of how time operates for instance in arab mediterranean latin american and african cultures it's perfectly normal for appointments to overlap. 
And in these cultures, multitasking plays a vital role in managing time. Effectively, people who often juggle several activities at once, like attending meetings while taking phone calls or working on multiple projects, rather than seeing interruptions as disruptions, they're viewing the interruptions as natural flows within the work process. In polychronic settings, prioritizing relationships over strict schedules is key. Business might stretch for on for hours to cultivate connections, and having an open door policy is very common even during busy times. So if we're trying to integrate the aspect of understanding time into a true artificial general intelligence that is compatible with all of humanity, then integrating a philosophy of time will have to include these cultures, polychronic ideas as well. So understanding the Western concept of linear time is far more intricate than just having a robot operate within time. It's about extracting elements from your experiences and linking them to the term time. The very ability to do this is quite remarkable and often overlooked. This leads to some fascinating questions. If time is really an internal sense of sorts, what is it that you're actually perceiving? Is it the overall concept of time, a specific moment, a comparison between two points, or something else entirely? Moreover, how do you transform that perception into a format that helps you tackle time-related problems? This episode, we're going to explore those questions and potentially answer some commonly held beliefs about your perception of time itself. Time is just one of many abstract concepts that can be tricky to pin down formally. Others, at least the ones that we have names for, include space, conditionality, similarity, consciousness, existence, shape, natural object, mind, goodness, justice, color, beauty, and so forth. Each of these concepts also carries subtle nuances, like the distinction between the usual, mundane, and the regular. It's important to remember that nobody comes into the world knowing how to speak words. Each of us goes through a learning journey that connects our experiences with these words in very unique ways. The tricky part is that it's hard to pin down specific sensory experiences to attach to many of them. For example, what can we link existence to in terms of our senses? It seems like the meanings of these concepts arise from within us, rather than purely from what we observe in generalized abstractions. They emerge from our individual attempts to tackle problems. The first step in unraveling this mystery is to recognize that people often complete tasks without understanding all the concepts behind them. For instance, a child can learn to buy or sell without realizing that the coins they use are part of a broader idea called money. They may simply learn to exchange a specific amount of coins for a particular item, viewing it as a unique event in a specific time and place. In essence, they can utilize money without recognizing it as such. Similarly, many people instinctively use words whose meanings they don't fully understand, relying on context and intuition. Take the phrase, separate the wheat from the chaff. Most might not know what chaff is, but they get that refers to something of lesser value and being separated from something of greater value. This example illustrates that a practical understanding can exist independently of a conceptual understanding. Clear-cut concepts like money are often introduced later in life, primarily for better communication. Early learning typically revolves around basic one-off sensory experiences without any higher level concepts attached to them. Initially, our understanding may be shallow, but over time, we can build a more accurate and complete picture. Through experience, especially when we face challenges in understanding a topic or explaining it to others, our understanding grows. And this is why ideas like beauty and consciousness can feel so personal. We can use these words, even if we struggle to define them clearly, to define and explain consciousness. At first, it might appear that these concepts are built into our brains. However, we also know that many abstract ideas like software and postmodernism aren't really innate. So if they're not hardwired directly into our brain and they're not deri directly derived from our experiences, where do they come from? Through this exploration of how children learn complex concepts, we can discover something profound about both human consciousness and artificial intelligence. 
Our understanding of abstract ideas doesn't emerge fully formed, but it grows from practical experiences as necessary. A child learning to recognize different types of doctors isn't just expanding their vocabulary, they're building the mental architecture needed to grasp increasingly abstract concepts. As we work towards creating general artificial intelligence, this insight becomes crucial. We cannot simply program abstract understanding into AI systems any more than we can download knowledge directly from AI into our brain. True intelligence, whether biological or artificial, requires the ability to build concepts from the ground up through interaction and experience. This process of concept formation reveals a fundamental truth about cognition itself. Understanding emerges not through passive absorption of information, but through active engagement with the world. It is this remarkable ability that we must understand and replicate if we hope to create AI systems capable of genuine understanding. This has been part one of a series on time, and I hope that you will click here and we can continue to part two in which we discuss the architecture of time itself. Don't stop now. I have dozens more videos. This video is part of a playlist, which I'll post for you here so that you can go through and watch other videos that are similar, or you can watch our newest videos and we have lots of other playlists. So keep clicking, keep watching. Click over there. <laughs>